So I want you to uh, take notice of what we said before about the one beast that uh, has two horns like a lamb and then you have uh, but it's beast like a dragon and how it endorses uh, the beast from the sea. So you see the two horned lamb beast from the earth endorses the beast from the sea that has seven heads um, with ten horns which is established as the the Roman Catholic, uh, the Roman Catholic Church, the the Vatican, the Pope, uh, the one that has the seven heads and the seven horns with crowns and such. So we see that 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 is the uh, papacy, the Vatican, the Pope, that whole establishment in Rome. Now I just want you to identify what happens. Well, first I want you to realize the magnitude of and the power and influence of the Roman Catholic Church, and in you will see how that when added to the power of the White House in uh, its in the power of the presidency you will see how this will lead to a very severe great uh, great deception so let's watch for a moment oh to give you a context What's happening here in this video is you're seeing, uh, it was on CNN, you're seeing how the uh, Pope, Benedict, is having every single religion come and bow down to him and kiss his hand and give him praise. And I'm going to surprise some of you to who comes and acknowledges him as holy. You, you, it, it is so remarkable, but this, again, helps bring the realization of how influential and deceptive this body will be. And I'm explain why after. So let's watch. This gentleman is from the Armenian church. Oh, sorry to interrupt, but whenever people are to meet the Pope personally, they're always instructed to wear dark garment. The reason why they're instructed to wear dark garment is because it makes him stand out to look more holy. It makes him uh, look distinguishable and more divine-like, if you will, quote-unquote, among their garment, uh, among what they wear. So that's what you're going to always see is dark outfits with the one going to his presence. Notice they're always going to him because he believes he is God, uh, uh, the, the, the closest thing you can get to God uh, besides Christ. So let's continue. And if you can hear him, the gentleman that's announcing him, he's saying before any person comes and sees him, he says, Your Holiness, may I present to you. Your Holiness, may I present to you. Evangelical Church in America. United Methodist Church. General Assembly of the Reformed Church in America. Presbyterian Church of the United States. Your Holiness, may I present Reverend Dr. William J. Shaw, President of the National Baptist Convention of the United States. Baptist Church of the United States. Your Holiness, may I present Bishop James Leggett, General Superintendent of the International Pentecost Holiness Church. The Pentecost Church. Uh, there's a whole story with the Pentecost Church to the Roman Catholic Church, but that's a whole another issue. But let's continue. Your Holiness, may I present Dr. Leif Anderson, President of the National Association of Evangelicals. 
the National Association of Evangelical Christians. The National Association of Evangelical Christians. The ones you always hear on television, a 700 Club. Those guys. The 700 Club and all those other, uh, I believe, um, Republican GOP um, uh Mount the uh, GOP uh, political figures, quasi political figures, but religious leaders who are uh, considered evangelical Christians, and yet you see one here shaking this hand upon someone calling him the holiness. Last time I checked, God and His Son Jesus was the only holy that of the holiness. Unbelievable. The Lutheran Church, oh my goodness, the Lutheran Church was even established to break away from the Roman Catholic Church. And look, they're shaking hands again. Your Holiness, may I present Reverend Dr. A.R. Bernard, Sr., President of the Council of Churches of the City of New York. More Council of Churches of New York and America, shaking hands with, quote, the Holiness. It breaks my heart to see the daughter of the late Dr. Dr. King, who was a minister of that Bible, has his daughter unknowingly shaking the hands of what her father preached from the Bible, where it states that the Roman Catholic Church will be that beast on the seven hills. The harlot, the red harlot of, pur of, of, of uh, scarlet and purple. Tragic. Let's continue. Your Holiness, may I present Reverend Jimmy Song Jilin, Executive Director of the Council of Churches of the City of New York. More churches bowing down to him. More churches acknowledging him as the whole as His Holiness. Your Holiness, may I present the Red Reverend Mark Sisk, Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of New York. More Episcopalian churches. Deep. So, friends, what you're seeing here again is deception at its greatest. What you're seeing is you have to understand how Satan works. Satan has to unite the world politically, economically, and religiously. Once he does that, then he's able to place the Antichrist in power over top of the con nations consolidated under one, an one another because of a great tragedy that's going to happen which is going to be the rapture. The rapture is going to invoke the whole world to just break apart and go crazy because people are going to just disappear across this planet but it will then put into place this religious uh, the religious world government, the, current, the, the economic world government, political world government where then Satan's Antichrist can be placed on the scene. But you got to understand that the Roman Catholic Church is an integral player in this, in this uh, scheme of his. And you can see how Rom. Now, again, the, the, the point I'm making here is that you see the influence of every, it, it, I'm not going to say every, but practically every known, quote, Christian, uh, deno Christian denomination gives reverence to the Pope as the holiness. You would not catch me there and I would not call him father. Because it's not true. But what's going to happen is you're going to have all these nations and all these religious nations giving heave to him and giving him giving him deference. But now since you've seen that, now let's watch. Kim Lawton takes a look at the unique role the Pope and the Vatican play on the world stage. Soviet leader Joseph Stalin was once questioned about the influence of the Vatican. Stalin is famously said to have replied, The Pope, how many divisions has he got? The answer, as it turns out, is more than Stalin and many others might have guessed. Experts say the Pope and the Vatican wield considerable global influence. They don't have economic engines they have to feed. They don't have armies. They don't have land. The Vatican is only 106 acres. It's 
smallest nation state in the world, but it is a huge moral, spiritual superpower. In questo momento, as the Bishop of Rome, Pope Benedict XVI is the spiritual head of the Roman Catholic Church worldwide. But he also wears another hat, head of state for the independent territory of Vatican City and the Catholic Church's government called the Holy See. The Holy See has played an active global role for centuries. It has permanent observer status at the United Nations and has all the rights of full UN membership. The Holy See has formal diplomatic relations with 177 countries around the world, including the U.S. Ambassadors called apostolic nuncios represent the Holy See from embassies like this one in Washington, D.C. The U.S. has sent an ambassador to the Holy See since 1984. The current U.S. ambassador at the Vatican is Harvard Law Professor Marianne Glendon, who took up her post in February. James Nicholson held the position from 2001 to 2005. I always said I practiced moral diplomacy. During the more than 25 years of his pontificate, John Paul II dramatically raised the profile of the papacy on the international level and played a key role on many fronts, such as helping to bring down communism in Eastern Europe. Throughout his extensive travels, he was a vigorous global voice. Benedict has continued that advocacy, which experts say reflects foundational Catholic beliefs. But times have changed since John Paul became Pope. We don't have the Soviet Union anymore. What we have is the problem in the problems in the Middle East, which is where uh, Pope Benedict has been directing his attention. The personalities have also changed. But Benedict again generated controversy in the Islamic world on the Saturday before Easter when he baptized a prominent Muslim journalist at a service in St. Peter's Basilica. He also been quietly working to establish relations, something that was not possible during the last papacy, largely because of John Paul's role in the fall of communism in Poland. The Chinese obviously didn't want John Paul II running around China doing the same thing. Most of the time, in places around the world, Vatican diplomats work outside the spotlight, where experts say they often have an advantage. Some question how much government leaders of today truly listen to what the Pope has to say. Okay, friends. So again, I just want you to—I just want to bring more clarity to the influence of the Vatican. Again, what you're going to see here is you're going to want to try to identify. Uh, try to identify the power of and the influence of the Vatican and the reason is because as it is explained here in Revelation it is where Satan's throne is the Vatican in Rome is where Satan's throne is everything since Christ was crucified dwells within the power of Rome in fact when you see what Daniel's prophecy the latter times dwell. The latter times deals with. In fact, b beyond that, you see with uh, Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great, his campaign is what created the Roman Catholic Church or the, the Roman Empire, which then broke apart and became the Roman, the Holy Roman Empire, in which you saw that it was wounded by Napoleon, in which it then became healed, reemerging to what we have today. And the reason being is because that is where Satan's throne is. Now, if you put this in the context, as I'm trying to explain here, before I move to the conclusion of what's uh, bound to come down the pipeline, is the association with Mitt Romney that he is a uh, that he accepts a belief that's saturated in occult satanic rituals i.e. Freemasonry and in which he's also the President of the United States and then his running mate is a Catholic who who side who he is a Catholic where the scriptures states it clearly that the Roman Catholic Church will play a part in latter times in the Antichrist in relation to the world moving towards a one world religion and that the lamb being the United States having two horns will help endorse this beast being the Vatican and you you again you're trying to I, I reconcile how can a small town of 200 acres have so much influence across the world because that's where Satan's throne is and with the help of the United States that will help push and perpetuate the agenda that Satan needs to lead to lead into this 
blessings and acknowledges him as holy. You, you, it, it is so remarkable, but this, again, helps bring the realization of how influential and deceptive this body will be. And I'm explain why after. So let's watch. This gentleman is from the Armenian church. Oh, sorry to interrupt, but whenever people are to meet the Pope personally, they're always instructed to wear dark garment. The reason why they're instructed to wear dark garment is because it makes him stand out to look more holy. It makes him uh, look distinguishable and more divine-like, if you will, quote-unquote, among their garment, uh, among what they wear. So that's what you're going to always see is dark outfits with the one going to his presence. Notice they're always going to him because he believes he is God and heads and the seven horns with crowns and such. So we see that that, that is the uh, papacy, the Vatican, the Pope, that whole establishment in Rome. Now I just want you to identify what happens. Well first I want you to realize the magnitude of and the power and influence of the Roman Catholic Church. And then you will see how that when added to the power of the White House in uh, its in the power of the presidency, you will. So I want you to uh, take notice of what we said before about the one beast that uh, has two horns like a lamb, and then you have, uh, but it speaks like a dragon, and how it endorses uh, the beast from the sea. So you see the two-horned lamb beast from the earth endorses the beast from the sea that has seven heads um, with ten horns which is established as the, the, Roman, Catholic, uh, the Roman Catholic Church, the, the Vatican, the Pope, uh, the one that has the seven we'll see how this will lead to a very severe great, uh, great deception. So let's watch for a moment. Oh, to give you a context, what's happening here in this video is you're seeing, uh, I was on CNN, you're seeing how the uh, Pope, Benedict, is having every single religion come and bow down to him and kiss his hand and give him praise. And I'm going to surprise some of you to who...